And thanks for your company. Now, prices of flight tickets have been reduced by over 30% after the Malaysian Aviation Commission, MAFCOM, agreed to cooperate in lowering the rates during the festive season. Transport Ministry Secretary-General Dato Isham Ishak, however, said the Commission would issue a detailed statement on its efforts to look into the reduced fares. Dari segi sektor penerbangan pula, kita dapati sebelum ni, dua tahun sebelum ni banyak daripada kapal-kapal terbang kita belum beroperasi sepenuhnya. Mereka memerlukan masa untuk kita memastikan mereka meet the standard dan melepasi ujian-ujian tertentu sebelum kapal-kapal tersebut dapat terbang semula. lah. Jadi bilangannya tidak full capacity lagi, mereka dalam proses. Kemudian dengan harga minyak yang telah meningkat dengan mendadak uh, implikasi daripada uh, perang uh, Rusia dan Ukraine ini telah memberi sedikit implikasi lah. He said this to reporters after a ceremony to send off Express Railing ERL staff to assist the Al Mashair Al Mugadasa Metro Line operation for the 2022 Hajj season at KL Central today. The Transport Ministry, MOT, the Malaysian Aviation Commission, MAFCOM, the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia, CAAM, and three airlines, Malaysia Airlines, AirAsia and Malindo, have reached a decision regarding the price of air tickets during festive seasons. Transport Minister Dr. Sri Dr. V. Kasyong said the decision came about during the 72-hour-long meeting that began last Thursday and would be announced soon by Prime Minister Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob. Kita dah faham bahawa trend ini bukan saja berlaku di Malaysia. Banyak tu. Tapi dalam keadaan Malaysia ini, kita lihat hubungan antara Sabah Sarawak dengan Semenanjung itu satu perkara yang sangat penting. Jadi kita kena melakukan sesuatu dan setelah intervensi dibuat pada hari Kamis, Jumat dan Sabtu dan sudah ada satu langkah ke saya yang mana saya rasa ianya boleh dilaksanakan. He said this at a media conference after launching the Road Safety and Integrated Ops campaign in conjunction with the 2022 Hari Raya Idol Fitri celebrations in Putrajaya today. The issue of airfares to Sabah and Srawa has become a hot topic recently, with prices of airline websites reaching almost 2,000 ringgit for a return flight to Sabah or Srawa, a 566% increase compared to the usual 300 ringgit price for the same trip. Now, five types of traffic offences committed during the Hari Raya Idol Fitri period cannot be compounded and will have to be settled in court. According to Transport Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Vika Siong, the non-compoundable offences are driving on the emergency lane, using handphone while driving, failure to observe the red light signal, queue jumping and speeding. Of express buses through the pre Hari Raya Ops would be conducted from 25th to 28th April at 75 depots and 28 main bus terminals throughout the country to ensure the roadworthiness of express buses. That was read Dr. Wee said 2,200 enforcement personnel of the Road Transport Department would be involved in the operation. Sepanjang tempoh pelaksanaan OPS bersepadu ini, antara inisiatif yang dilaksanakan oleh JPJ adalah melibatkan penguatkuasaan melalui yang pertama, kaedah penyamaran sebagai penumpang bus ekspres. Kedua, pemantauan melalui enforcement base station EBS di 14 lokasi tumpuan sepanjang lebur raya. Ketiga, pelaksanaan perception of being caught POBs secara rodaan di lalan utama jalan tersebut dan keempat ops khas fotosikal serentak di seluruh negara yang akan diadakan secara bersepadu bersama agensi yang berkaitan. Launching a road safety campaign and ops bersepadu in conjunction with Hari Raya Idol Fitri in Putrajaya today, he said the ban on goods vehicles would be enforced for three days before and two days after Hari Raya Idol Fitri from 30th April to 2nd May and 7th and 8th May. A female clerk who was ordered to serve a six-year jail term by a Johor Bahru High Court judge over the bicycle laja or modified bicycle case has been freed on bail. The Court of Appeal allowed 27-year-old Sam Keting to be bailed after Deputy Public Prosecutor Manoj Kurup said the prosecution had no objection to the application. 
Noting that the case had gotten a lot of publicity, the prosecution had no objection to Sam's application and bail should be allowed. A three-member bench led by Dato P. Ravindran freed Sam on 10,000 ringgit bail with one surety and also allowed her application for a stay of execution and to file an appeal against the sentence and conviction. Defence lawyer Mohamed Faisal Mukta said Sam was thankful her application to appeal against the Johor Bahru High Court's decision to jail her for six years and 6,000 ringgit fine had been granted. He said Sam had been attending every court proceeding without fail and posed no flight risk whatsoever. Sam had applied for leave to appeal against the High Court's decision after she was denied a stay of execution by Johor Bahru High Court Judge Dato Abu Baka Qatar. It was reported that Judge Dato Abu Baka convicted Sam after ruling that she had failed to put up a defence at the prosecution stage of a trial. He said her unsworn statement from the dock after the court told her to enter her defence was a bare denial and an afterthought. Police have smashed a drug smuggling syndicate in Kelantan following the arrest of seven individuals and seizure of drugs worth 4.6 million ringgit recently. Bukit Aman Narcotics Criminal Investigation Department and CID Director Dato Ayub Han Maidin Piche said the seven, including a couple, were nabbed in six separate operations in the state. According to Dato Ayub Han, the drugs comprise of 101.5 kilograms of shabu. 19 kilograms of yaba pills and 4 liters of cough syrup believed to be distributed to local markets. Dalam sesata lagi tapi yang kita tangkap mula-mula memang pasangan ini. Daripada pasangan inilah kita apa ni kembangkan sesatan kita, operasi kita dan kita membuat tangkapan susulan. Tapi yang pertama kita tangkap adalah pasangan suami isteri ini. In the operations he said police also seized various types of valuables belonging to the seventh worth, more than 500,000 ringgit, which includes several vehicles, cash and jewelries. All of the suspects are in remand for seven days until 22nd April for further investigation under Section 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. Police have arrested six suspects and seized nearly 400,000 ringgit worth of drugs in several raids in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor. City Narcotics Crime Investigation Department and CID Chief ACP Jasmirul Jamaluddin said police conducted a series of raids last Thursday and Friday. ACP Jasmirul said investigations reveal that the group's 43-year-old ringleader was among those arrested, adding that the six suspects were aged between 20 and 45. He also believes that the group has been active for at least three months. Setelah dibuat ujian saringan awal, dua lelaki positif met jenis syabu, Satu lelaki positif ganja, satu perempuan positif mat juga dan dua lelaki negatif. Dan hasil keseluruhan rampasan dadah bernilai sebanyak 386.7 ribu. Dekat 400 ribu ya tuan-tuan. Dan ini boleh digunakan untuk keseluruhan 48,594 orang penagih yang berada di pasaran. He said the syndicate had regular customers and sold the drugs at entertainment outlets, budget hotels as well as certain roadside locations in Kuala Lumpur. ACP Jasmirul also said that the suspects have all been remanded for seven days to help with the investigation. Now for the COVID updates, Malaysia recorded 11,233 recoveries from COVID-19 yesterday compared to 6,623 new cases. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said 6,610 of the new cases were local infections, with 96.1% being Malaysians and 3.9% foreigners, while 13 were imported cases with 84.6% being Malaysians and 15.4% foreigners. In a statement today, Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham said the new cases bring the cumulative figure for COVID-19 infections to over 4.389 million. Six new clusters were detected yesterday, bringing the number of active clusters to 120. 
He said 241 cases were admitted to hospital yesterday, comprising 106 cases in categories 3, 4 and 5, and 135 cases in categories 1 and 2. On the use of health facilities dedicated to COVID-19 cases, Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham said, no states exceeded a usage rate of 50% for both intensive care units, ICU, and non-ICU beds. For beds at low-risk COVID-19 treatment and quarantine centers, only PERA recorded an occupancy rate exceeding 50% at 58%. He said the number of COVID-19 patients on ventilators dropped to 76 yesterday, giving a ventilator usage rate of 10%. Up next, appeals to perform Hajj ritual aloud from tomorrow. Stay with us. Members of the public can start making an appeal to the Lembaga Tabung Haji TH to perform the Hajj ritual this year through Tijari application from tomorrow until 18 May. Muslims in the country are encouraged to take the opportunity and benefit from the facility with which they are no longer required to physically send a formal letter to the pilgrimage fund. Explaining further, Hajj Executive Director Dato Sri Said Saleh Said Abdul Rahman said TH has decided to open the application before the announcement of the Hajj quota in order to prevent the process from being made at the last minute. The approval for the appeals will be granted based on certain criteria, with Mahram appeals to be given the priority. The Tijari application can be downloaded via Google Play or App Store in order for the depositors to easily make appeals, check the application status and the remaining balance in their Tabung Haji savings account. After a two-year hiatus, Express Rail links to Diran Berhad ERL will once again be sending its staff to Saudi Arabia to support the al masha -e al mugadasa metro train operations during the Hajj season this year. 25 of its staff will be going to the Holy Land to offer their services, with the first 10 to leave on 20th April, while the remaining on 20th May. ERL Chief Executive Officer Norma Muhammad Noor said this year marks ERL's ninth year of providing operational support to the Makkah Metro in collaboration with China Railway Construction Corporation Limited Saudi Arabia since 2012. She said the move is a true testament to ERL's strength and commitment to world-class service and reliability. She added this year, will certainly pose a new challenge to the staff in view of the tight health protocol and emphasis on pilgrims' safety. However, she is confident that their experience, skills and competence will help ensure the operations run smoothly and the company's good track record is maintained. Known as the Makkah Metro, the 18-kilometre railway system connects the holy sites of Arafah, Mujdalifa and Mina and operates seven days a year only to transport the pilgrims during the peak Hajj week. Teku Nasional has disbursed about 200 million ringgit under the informal and micro financing scheme to 31,000 entrepreneurs nationwide. Entrepreneur Development and Cooperatives Minister Tan Sri Noh Omar said under the scheme, traders are eligible to receive a maximum financing of up to 10,000 ringgit without profit charge and a moratorium for 12 months. Saya harap 200 juta ni pula akan dapat dibayar balik semula mulai tahun depan lah Untuk beri peluang juga kepada orang lain untuk berniaga Jadi uh, jadi saya nak maklumkan di luar sana Jadi buat masa ini yang untuk 200 juta tu telah pun selesai 
Speaking at the presentation of aid to Kluarga Malaysia entrepreneurs affected by floods in Kota Baru, Tan Sri Noh said the initiative by the government is to help informal entrepreneurs, including those who do business from home and without a business license. He said some are eligible to receive financing of 3,000 ringgit and a maximum of 10,000 ringgit, depending on their needs. Kelantan will have its first Form 6 college in Bukit China, Ketere, near Kota Baru. The good news was shared by Senior Education Minister Dr. Dr. Mohamad Razi Jidin in a posting on Facebook today. According to him, the college, which will have 20 classrooms and other facilities, will be built in Bukit China, bordering Ketere and Machang. He said the college would be at a strategic location as it is close to the main road linking Kota Baru and Guamusang. The senior minister further explained that the construction of the college will give the opportunity to Kelantan children to pursue post-secondary education at a proper Form 6 college premises. He also expressed confidence that the project would steer the country towards academic excellence through the provision of a better and proper educational infrastructure for the future generation of the country, especially in Kelantan. He noted that at present, there are 26 Form 6 colleges in the country. Sports Chelsea Sink Palace to book FA Cup final. Stay with us. We begin with local football. Kedah Darul Aman FC have played the nightmare of being beaten 4 1 by Slango FC last week behind as they defeated Penang FC 2 1 in the 2022 Super League match at the Bandaraya Stadium in Georgetown on Sunday. The win by Singaporean coach Ideal Sharin Saha's men in the Northern Derby saw Kuda leapfrog Sabah FC to second place in the league with 12 points after five matches behind leaders JDT. Although Kedah dominated the match in the first 10 minutes, Penang soaked up the pressure well and scored the opening goal in the 16th minute through Lebanese striker Hilal Al Halwe with an assist by T. Saravanan. Penang goalkeeper Katul Anwar Majalil then brilliantly denied Kedah's Cameroon born striker Ronald Nga Wanja in the 28th minute to take the lead into the break. The Canary squad continued their onslaught in the second half and it paid off when Ronald completed a penalty kick in the 62nd minute after he was fouled by defender Arif Ar Rashid Arifin. Three minutes later, Ronald curled in the ball superbly from the left side of the field to give the visitors the win. In our top story, flight prices reduced by over 30%. Join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. Till then, it's lights out. I'm Brendan Paul. Thanks for watching.